we all know now within the British monarchy there are basically two people running said monarchy. There has to be. Waiting in the wings, sadly, obviously for him, is none other than His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales. And when I say sadly, what I mean is, as he's pointed out, nobody really wants a top job because that means you lose somebody that you love. But of course, in the background, making the bigger decisions is none other than His Majesty the King. It's his chance to shine and it's the way that he wishes to reign right now. Now, as we saw, he can be a very decisive king because at the start of this year, he decided that both Harry and Meghan simply were going to be wiped out of Frogmore Cottage. The bottom line was this, he wasn't being unkind because they could not give him any timeline as to as and when they would wish to use said cottage. It was as and when. Now, yes, they could pay rent on that. And yes, you know, some might say, well, given the things he said in that autobiography spare, why should the king keep it on? But the other side then was, of course, that Harry and Meghan still were looking for a place over here in London, perhaps by privately or indeed return back to a place that allegedly Meghan Markle said she didn't enjoy her time at all, Kensington Palace. So exactly what happened there? As ever, let me explain. Hi, good morning, Neil Sean here in the very heart of London. And as ever, thank you so much. Lovely to see you as ever. Let's have a wave. Yes, Kensington Palace, if you don't know, is a beautiful place in the very heart of London. Started out as a private home and then literally was built upon and built upon. It's like a mini city. You know, what we see, you know, the commoners, you and I, when we go around the museum and all that sort of stuff, there's nothing what you get to see inside. It literally is a world within a world. Quite why Meghan and Harry did not like living there, I've no idea. And given the fact that now, of course, Prince Harry's mother is literally in situ, statue form in Kensington Gardens, why on earth would you not want to be close to that? But seemingly, Meghan didn't like. She fancied the castle. The Queen put a stiletto heel down and said castle was not forthcoming. What's interesting also now, though, is this. While they sort of hinted that they would like a return back to a London permanent base, perhaps a flat, and when I say flat, we're talking a series of rooms in Kensington Palace, it was, in fact, I've been told by a very good, well-placed palace source, the uh, Prince of Wales, who basically said, no, but no thanks. And there's a bigger picture attached to this. This is not about them being petulant, but there are still members of staff who really did, and we have to say allegedly, go through the ringer in their short time there with Harry and Meghan. As we know, those bullying claims had a private investigation led by none other than our late and beautiful monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, and everything was put to one side. Meghan and Harry pushed for this to be made public. We know the outcome of that. But according to that well-placed source, no one really wants to see them to return to be part of the Kensington set. And you can understand that really from both sides of the coin. The bigger picture is that while William and Catherine are very rarely at Kensington Palace now, there are still other people living and working there. And you know, there's a full-time office. Now, if it wasn't good enough once, why is it good enough twice? And more importantly, as William and Catherine both know, why should their staff or anyone's staff be put through the anxiety, the trauma of a returning person who clearly did not enjoy their time there and they clearly did not enjoy their time serving those people. You get the picture. So if you want to know why there's no Kensington set return, it's right there, up to Prince William. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.